Hello Cancer and welcome to your new moon insight video for the lunar cycle beginning with the new moon in Gemini on the 13th of June going up towards the new moon solar eclipse in your sign in the sign of Cancer on the 13th of July. So this is another very busy um, cosmic lunar cycle. We have three planets changing direction. We're heading into eclipse season and there's a lot going on um, particularly with Mars being about to station retrograde and being very bright and strong in the heaven at this time, you know, in square to Uranus. There is a fire, a kundalini energy that is rising all around us and things are shifting and changing. This reading is designed to help you understand how those energies are moving through your own birth chart and cycling through your own life. So we begin this lunar cycle with a new moon in Gemini and this new moon will fall in your 12th house of endings, of dissolution. This is the final house of the birth chart. It's where we let go of our worldly attachments and dissolve into source, dissolve into spirit. This is also the section of our birth chart where we can harbor a lot of subconscious fear, a lot of patterning, um, um, belief systems that we may not be aware of. So for this new moon to be falling in this 12th house in the sign of Gemini gives you an opportunity to renew your thinking patterns, to let go of the old structures, the old ways of doing things, the old ways of believing that are no longer serving you. This is a moment of healing, a point of renewal and rebirth where you can set your intentions to heal yourself, to offer your healing energy and essence to the world. The 12th house is also the house of unconditional love, of what is often called the Christ consciousness. So this can be a shedding of old hurt, a shedding of old wounding and an opening where you can set your intentions, where you can speak your intentions that will call forward a new vibration for you, a new facet of reality. So this is a potent time and when we're working with the 12th house, we are often working with the clearing of old psychic baggage. And that can be not just from this lifetime, but from previous incarnations too. This is perhaps the most multidimensional house of the birth chart. And you're going to have the sun um, still transiting through this space until the summer solstice when it moves into your sign. So there can be a lot of subconscious clearing going on, there can be a need to kind of rest and withdraw and allow the changes to flow and move through you. This is a time of surrendering to the, the ebb and flow of life until the sun moves into your sign later on in the month. So Mercury is going to be moving into your sign as the new moon rises and he is the ruler of this new moon. So this can help you to really vocalise um, any of these old patterns or pains that you've been holding on to. This can really aid your ability to express yourself emotionally, Cancer. You are one of the most private signs, you know, you're the water sign with its little hard protective shell on its back and its pincers. So there can be an element of you quite often burying your feelings and not speaking your truth. And Mercury in the first house 
can really help you to vocalise your needs around the time of this new moon. Mercury is going to be in square to Chiron in your 10th house, your 10th house of career, of reputation, of life purpose. So perhaps there are words that need to be spoken. Um, perhaps there are parts of yourself that you need to reclaim and reconnect with before you can step into your role as the healer, as the sh shaman, as Chiron, the medicine man or medicine woman. There is for all of us at this time a lot of healing going on around the negative thought patterns that we have picked us up picked up that are limiting us in certain areas of our life and for you this can be focused around life purpose and career so this is a time of you really digging deep and seeing what self-sabotaging beliefs that you're holding on to that are stopping you from expressing your fullest potential and we also have venus moving into leo in your second house around the time of this new moon and the second house is the house of resources it's the house of values it's the house of self-love and self-worth so Venus moving through this space for the next couple of weeks can really help you to magnetize more of these qualities towards yourself but it really does also with Venus being in Leo call you to authentically express your truth, authentically express yourself creatively. Perhaps uh, your creative offerings are um, going to be a source of income for you. Perhaps there is something that you have been holding on to that you're feeling, oh, it's not good enough to share with the rest of the world. Um, but this energy, particularly as Venus squares Uranus in your 11th house of hopes and dreams can really invite you to share your true self, to share your heart with the world, you know, reveal to us all of your magic cancer, all of your beautiful gifts and talents that you've been hiding away. This energy can also speak to how you are valuing yourself and how you are being valued by others, particularly those in your friendship circle, though particularly in the groups online and in person that you are connecting with in your community, you know, are you truly being treated as you deserve to be? Are your talents and gifts being honoured by those who are close to you? If not, perhaps there needs to be some changes, you know, Venus square Uranus is a self-love revolution. So this energy calls you to think, you know, how much more deeply can I love myself? How can I let go of worrying about the projections of other people and the rest of the world? This is a time of creating and loving and sharing simply for the joy of it, without attachment to how it's received by other people. So use this new moon energy to go in, to clear that subconscious programming, ready for you to share your heart with the world as the rest of the, the energies of the lunar cycle unfold. On the 17th of June, Neptune is going to station retrograde. And this is going to be in the ninth house for you, Cancer. So this can be a time of deep spiritual connection of being able to see through eyes of compassion, of unconditional love. And it can also be a time where you are invited to look at your spiritual beliefs, at your spiritual ideologies and think, is this really true for me anymore? Um, is this belief system that I am subscribing to still true for me. It's time to kind of rework and recalibrate around our spirituality when a planet moves retrograde in our ninth house. So perhaps there is a need to dissolve some of that old stuff so new 
patterns can emerge, so new belief systems can be formed. And this can also be, you know, a time where we investigate where we are perhaps spiritually bypassing with our beliefs, you know, where our spiritual beliefs are preventing us from fully healing or fully engaging in reality as it is in the now. On the 19th of June, that Venus in the second house energy, that energy that I just talked about, about rediscovering your worth, is going to be conjunct the North Node, the point of cosmic evolution for us all, and in opposition to Mars in the eighth house. Now Mars is going to be going retrograde here for most of the summer, and this is going to be a very, very intense energy for you, Cancer. The eighth house is the house of the shadow realm, so there's going to be a lot of deep soul diving going on. So what is arising around this time, the 19th of June, can really be a foreshadowing of what you can expect as the summer unfolds. And this can also be, at this time, you know, highlighting your intimate relationships, your shared resources, um, and it can really be highlighting that sense of self-protectiveness and hiding yourself from the world that I mentioned earlier as well. So just be aware of what rises up, um, particularly in your relationships around this time. On the 21st, the sun moves into Cancer, your sign. It's the summer solstice for her us here in the northern hemisphere. It's the winter solstice, the rebirth of the light for those in the southern. So this is a huge energy shift for us all, but particularly for you as the sun comes in to illuminate your sign. And Cancer, you are the great mother. You are the great nurturer, the protector, the provider, the giver. So you can expect to find this energy that is so intertwined within you even more amplified for the next four weeks. When the sun is in our sign, we tend to shine more brightly as it moves through the first house of our birth chart. We become more magnetic. We become more vital. We become more alive. And all of those beautiful Cancerian qualities are just going to be flowing through you at this time, Cancer. So just be sure that you are also saving some of that nourishing, nurturing energy for yourself as well, that you are practicing good boundaries with those in your life. So on the 25th, Mars will officially station retrograde in your eighth house and as I mentioned earlier he's been there for a little while already so you will have already been sensing this energy for a few weeks now and Mars in the eighth house he's quite happy there because this is the Scorpio section of the birth chart and Mars is the ancient ruler of Scorpio so it is an amplification of Mars Scorpio energy. So this can be very, very intense. It can be an intense two month period as Mars goes through the eighth house in the sign of Aquarius, the great liberator. This is a time for you to free yourself from the pain of the past. This is a time of doing a fire walk into the shadows, into the darkest recesses of your soul and psychology and really diving deep and seeing what needs to be purged, what seem, needs to be let go, what fears are holding you back, you know, what needs to be embraced within you for you to step back into wholeness. This is the house of the underworld, of the shadow realm. So for you, Cancer, this is a journey, a shamanic initiation, a death and rebirth process. 
of journeying into the underworld and reclaiming those soul fragments, all of those parts of yourself that you have suppressed, denied, you know, perhaps they're not spiritual enough, perhaps they're not loving enough. So we bury it, we bury our anger, we bury our pain, and to some extent, you know, we bury our wildness and passion as well. So what needs to be recollected and reconnected with within you so that you can become the fullest, most powerful version of who you are? And so this, as I shared in my written report um, for this month's astrology, for your sign is like opening Pandora's box. It's looking into those spaces and really being willing to face whatever is there. And this can really play out in our intimate relationships, Cancer, because Scorpio is that sign of alchemy through intimacy. It is that sign of soul bonding. So if we're holding on to any fears or any old sexual wounding that's preventing us from truly connecting with, with love and intimacy in the now, that will also need to be looked at. So it's a very, very potent and deeply soul healing transit, but it, it there does need to be an element of surrender, of being willing to go with it, the, the process of liberation. So this energy is working in tandem at the moment with Saturn and Pluto who are moving through your seventh house of relationship and Saturn has been here since the winter solstice um, last year so he's been here for six months now and on the 28th of June we have a full moon in the sign of Capricorn in your opposite sign conjunct Saturn its ruler so this is a very powerfully illuminating energy that will really kind of bring us back down into reality. And for you, Cancer, this can really illuminate the work you've been doing in your relationships for the past six months. The seventh house is the house, the part of our birth chart where we meet the other person as a mirror to ourselves. So this can really reflect back to you the lessons that you have been learning and how far you've come um, in restructuring your relationships. You know, perhaps you've had to draw more boundaries with other people or perhaps there have been some relationships that needed to be let go of. Perhaps you have come to realise how unequal some of your relationships have been. So as this full moon rises, it's going to be time for you to review that and see what other work needs to be done as this transit unfolds. Because Saturn's going to be in this area of the birth chart till 2020, so there's still some deep work to be done. And Pluto is also here as well, and Mars will be dipping back here for a little while as well during his retrograde per, um, journey. So the summer for you, Cancer, is really all about healing your relationships, healing your connections with other people on many levels. So on the 9th of June, Venus is going to shift from that second house energy, shift from Leo in the second house into Virgo in your third house. So this is a time where you can find yourself needing to realign your belief patterns with the truth of who you are. So this can be a time of healing any self-critical or negative thought patterns you're carrying about yourself, any feelings of being unworthy, any feelings of, you know, what I'm doing isn't good enough. It can all come up to be healed at this time. And you can also find yourself drawing to you new friendships, new connections, new networking opportunities as Venus moves through here. But it's important to be discerning and to have boundaries once again and to really know 
which connections are worth your time and energy and which perhaps need to be discarded. On the 10th of July, Jupiter is going to station direct and Jupiter has been moving through your fifth house since last year and he's been retrograde here since March this year and the fifth house is the house of creative self-expression. It's the house that is traditionally ruled over by Leo so we're back to that energy of, of you sharing your gifts and talents with the world, you not being afraid to be seen in all of your light, in all of your power, in all of your glory, Cancer. So if you have been working to birth a creative product, creative endeavour um, into the world over the past couple of months and things haven't seemed to be flowing, then this is a time when it can really open up and expand for you and, you know, the, the time of hard labour is over and, you know, your creation just kind of pops out into the world to be shared with others. If um, you have been doing some really deep soul diving around your beliefs about self-love, romantic love, joy, pleasure, um, sexuality, this can be a time when you can really start to reap the rewards of the inner healing journey that you have been on. The fifth house is the house of, of joy, of the inner child, of the things that bring us pleasure in life. So this can be a time where you can start to feel the, the light returning, the energy returning back into your being. Um, so as Jupiter stations direct, sometimes that energy can, can amplify a bit more and things can seem a little bit more challenging um, than they have been previously. But as he begins to pick up speed and the energies start to unwind, you should notice more flow, more ease, more movement in these areas of your life and your creative juices will start to flow again. We're going to end the month with a new moon solar eclipse in your sign. So this is really interesting because the nodes are still going to be in Leo and Aquarius um, up until um, a few months, up for another few months time. But we are going to, with this eclipse, experience a taster of what we can expect um, when the eclipse cycle changes to Cancer and Capricorn. So for you, Cancer, this nodal polarity will be highlighting your house of self, your first house, and that seventh house energy again that I was talking about earlier on in this video. So these eclipses are really going to ask you to balance the giving and receiving in your relationships. They're going to ask you to balance your need for freedom, your need for sacred selfhood with your needs for partnership. So it's an axis of independence versus codependence. So this can create changes in you and how you present yourself to the world. And it can also create changes in your relationship. And this eclipse will give you a little taster of what is to come for you over the next cycle. This eclipse is going to be opposing Pluto in the seventh house. So we're really going to start to see even more deep work around partnership, around our hidden fears arising at this time. We also have, as this eclipse rises, a beautiful water trine, an earth trine, appearing in the sky, um, which will open up a portal of manifestation, which will help us to kind of ground the healing energy that we've been working with into practicality as well. So this will really give you an opportunity 
to see where you have been and, and also to see what still needs to be worked upon as these long-term cycles start to unfold. So this is a huge month for you, Cancer. Eclipses can really shake the foundations of our life when they happen in our signs. They can bring much change and much revelation. You know, they're unpredictable by nature. They are fated cosmic events. So just be aware of synchronicities, of people, of situations that arise in your life at this time and just know again that this is a foreshadowing of the lessons that you will be experiencing as your soul journey unfolds. So we picked a card for you, the key of life and this is from the Isis Oracle by Alana Fairchild. And this card is all about creativity, which is really interesting with Jupiter turning direct in that fifth house of your birth chart. So this is saying to you, you know, allow yourself to express your feelings, express the love in your heart through your creative endeavors. Allow the universe to birth through you and when I think of the fifth house I always think of the Rumi quote let the beauty of what you love be what you do so just tap in this month cancer to that sense of authentic heart-centered self-expression just simply expressing creative energy for the joy of doing it you know write pair paint, play, sing, dance, chant, whatever brings you happiness. Allow yourself to indulge in it and then know that if you are one of those souls who has been laboring creatively for the past few months that the rewards are coming, you know, your hard work won't have been in vain. So Thank you so much for listening to me, Cancer. Um, I hope that, that, that this reading has served you and I am sending you so much love for your birthday season.